Hello, so we are on page three. So we finished page two. Now, when I, after I completed this, I put it uh, under some heavy books just to flatten everything out to make it as flat as possible. Um, since it is a waterfall, I wanted to make it as flat as possible. So, and I left that in overnight and now it looks pretty good. So if you guys want to do that, it's just kind of hanging around doing nothing. So stick it under some heavy books, let it flatten out overnight, and you're ready to go. So that's page two. So now we're going to be doing page three. So these pages are going to be facing each other. So we need to tie them in. So we will be doing that. So this will coordinate with this page. I put this away. So if you saw the walkthrough, you know this page is where we're going to be having our little pockets with our doors. So you are going to be cutting out all these, all these doors. These are from the 12 by 12 collection. So you have all these doors. Now, when you look at the doors real carefully, you will see that there is kind of a, sh a shadow on the edges over here. And I hand cut mine all out. So I made sure that when I was coming around here, I cut the shadow. Because you want this to be a little bit bigger than these. So that shadow just gives you a little bit more, a little bit more. Makes them a little bit bigger than these. I also hand cut all these out. Now, after you cut them out, what I did is I inked with black soot. I inked with black soot all the way around the black soot help bring out that shadow in here. And that just looks really nice, makes the door pop out a little bit. So depending on how fast you are on cutting things out, I'm real slow, but it was nice and relaxing to do. So I cut out all my cards. We're gonna start with one through 10. And then I cut all these pieces out and also inked them, but these I just basically inked with the vintage photo. Oops, I didn't cover that one. Vintage photo. So we're gonna put our cards aside now. And we will be using these later. And with the walkthrough, you kind of saw how we were gonna be using them. So if you did not want to use these, Oh, there's my number three. I was wondering where you went, number three. Oh my goodness. I put all these in a little envelope. So I have them in my little envelope so I don't lose them because I tend to lose things. So they're in my little envelope. So you're going to cut these and these. Just start with one through 10 for now. Then you are going, we are going to make a little flat page that goes on um, page number, our pocket page number three. So you are going to cut a piece that's five and a half inches in width by almost eight inches long. I I want to make sure it's just a little bit under the eighth because we want to make sure this does not overhang our pocket page. So almost eight inches high. And then you're going to score it at this five and a half inch side. Then for our pockets, we're going to have a bottom pocket that is five and a half inches long by one and a half inches tall. So cut that piece, there's only one of them. And then you're going to make four pockets 
that are five and a half inches long by one and a three quarter inches tall. So let's start with our bottom pocket. So the bottom pocket, you're going to be getting your scoreboard out. Get to mine. And you are going to be scoring it at a half an inch here and a half an inch here. And then you're going to fold and stay in, stay in the frame. Fold and burnish. And that is pretty much it for the bottom pocket. That one is easy. So I'm going to put this right here so I don't lose it. Now you have these four pockets. So same thing. You are going to score it at this five inch on top, score it at a half an inch, flip it over half an inch, you're going to fold and burnish those score marks. Now this is what you're going to do different with these. You're going to put this back in your scoreboard with the, the flap side up. And you are going to get a pencil and you are going to make a little mark at the half inch right here and then the half inch right here. That's one, two, three, four. Yes, right there is my half inch. So you are going to do that with all your, your pocket pieces. So half an inch, half an inch, fold and burnish. Flap side up, make a little tick mark at the half inch right there, and then a little tick mark at the half inch right here. Hopefully I'm getting those right. So you're going to do that four times. Now this next part, it's not as hard as it seems, but I always have to make it harder than it really is. What we are going to do, here's your half inch. A tick mark, you're going to be cutting it from this tick mark to the corner here. So you're going to be cutting it from this tick mark, which was the half inch, to the corner right here. Now you can just freehand cut that. What you're going to do is you're going to hold it like this with it folded in and you're going to cut from here to there. I guess I could try it. I can kind of see it. The, when I was doing my prototype, I actually drew a line. But let me see if I can actually, if I do, maybe if I make my, I can put a pencil mark there so I can see that corner better. Otherwise, it's black on black. It's hard to see. So what you're going to do, you're going to get your scissors and you are going to cut so you're you you're folding it in you've got your half inch mark here you're going to cut to this corner half inch mark right there you're going to cut to that corner hopefully i cut in enough <sighs> see i'm always i always feel like i can't do this straight half inch mark there cut into there so hopefully i did it well enough now you've got these little wings, these little wings that were left. So you're just going to cut straight from, from here to here. So you're just going to cut that little triangle off. Cut 
that little triangle off and cut that little triangle off. You can probably do this better than me because I normally I can't see that well so um, I didn't even look like I cut that straight. I didn't even cut that straight. I usually have to hold this up real close so I can see it and then I cut in through that but it should be something like this. So I'm going to, I'll try that again. Here it is. My tick mark there. I'm going to make a mark here so I can see it. And then I'm going to make a mark here so I can see it. Maybe I'll draw, maybe this time I'll, I'll hand draw a line instead of measuring it. so I can actually see where I'm cutting. And then I'm going to cut from here to there. Cut from here to there. Open it up. Cut those little triangles off. This way I can see it better. Cut those little triangles off. So do that for all four pockets. And I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. So we got all our pockets cut. Clean up my mess. So this is how it's going to, this flap is going to fit on our pocket page. So here's our pocket page. So this is the third page. So this is going to be the hinge side. So it's going in the hinge here. This is the outside. So we are going to, you get this piece and you're going to burnish that edge real well. And when you attach this, you're going to be attaching it like this. So it's going to fold in like that. So just so, so you have an idea how it's going to fit. What we, we are going to be applying our pockets in the inside flap, inside side part of the flap. So you can either attach it to your pocket now, if you'd like, just knowing this is going to be the inside of flap, and this is where you're going to have your pockets. Okay, I think I'm going to, I'm going to do everything on my flap without putting it on my pocket page, just in case I, I screw up, because I tend to, to do that. And if I do, I don't waste my pocket page too. So the next thing we're going to do is you are going to cut half inch strips. These green half inch strips, this is going to um, help tie it into page three. And you are cutting these green inch strips from the eight inch page. So this is from the eight inch collection. Cut half an inch strips here. They're going to be a little less than eight inches tall. Just get them and size them and cut the ends off. I mean, I, I'm not sure what mine, mine ended up being. They're, they are Eight and seven eighths. Is that so? It's like one eighth less than eight inches. So that's what mine are. But you measure yours, and I'm going to put them on each side here, and then we are going to be adding our pockets starting down here. 
So there's going to be a little overlap of the pockets here. And the other thing is, I did not come up with this idea. I saw this on Scrap Queen's channel. I love watching Scrap Queen. She has some such amazing ideas and half the time I don't know how to use them. But I saw this one and I go, oh, I could use it for my, my doors. So that's what I'm trying to do. So Scrap Queen, thank you. So I'm going to go ahead and hear my two little side um, parts here and then I will be right back. So I have my border strips in and remember this is going to be the inside flap. So this is your pocket page. Here's, here's the hinge. This is the outside. It's going to be adhered like this. So that's the way it's going to be and you can adhere it if you like. <laughs> that makes you feel better. Um, and you won't make more any mistakes but if you know how it's going to go in this is my inside flap we're going to be adding our pockets now we're going to be starting at the bottom this first pocket is real easy you're basically just going to adhere the two edges and then you'll put a thin line of glue at the bottom and then you're going to adhere it now you know me and glue. Can I do this? Can I do this? Can I do this? And it's tell you what, I'm going to put glue here and here and a thin line at the bottom and let's just see how I do. I do not like glue. It scares scares the dickens out of me. I can't even apply it correctly. I'm just not a glue person. So where's my bottom? The bottom's gonna be down here. So just a thin little strip at the bottom. See, I can't even make a straight line. Look at that, look at that. Oh my goodness. This, oh. Me and glue. It's like I get, I actually start shaking when I'm using glue. That's. That's pretty bad. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to look at my edge at the bottom, line it up, make sure these two edges are perfectly lined up. And does that look good? Move it over just a tad. I don't like it. It's just a tad. It's already, the glue's already stuck. So it is what it is. So uh, it's okay. It's okay. Let me, let me have a look up closer. Can I move it just a tad? See how I struggle? This is ridiculous. I struggle with glue. <laughs> and I, I cannot use the art glitter glue because it just catches way too fast. This one gives me a little bit more wiggle room and it still dries pretty quick. So I got my first page down, my first pocket down. Now, for the rest of these, the way these work, you're going to dry fit them in. They're going to slide in here. So these are going to slide in. And they should fit like this. And I'm not sure why I've got a little thing sticking out there. I don't like my edges sticking out. But this is going to slide in here. You should be able to, there it slides right in. And then what you do with this, 
you are going to add glue, obviously, to the sides. And then you're going to have a little strip of glue down in here. Just a little strip of glue. So maybe I will do this on camera and then all the rest so you don't have to see me struggling. I'll do off camera. But what, what you do want to do before you put your pocket in is kind of dry fit it. Make sure it fits and you don't need to do any trimming. And I'm wondering if we should put any designer paper on these pockets before, before we insert them in. Does it really matter? This one, it doesn't matter, but these, if you cut the paper out just to fit it, does it really matter? Probably not. Okay, we'll just, we'll just put the pockets in. So I'm going to go ahead and add the glue. You can feel me shaking again. I'm just shaking. And I'm going to, I'm not going to put the glue all the way up here. I'm going to come down like halfway on this floor. Look at that. Oh my God. Look at that squiggly out of control line. Oh my God. I do not like that. Do not like that. <sighs> okay. Look at that. Oh my goodness. I am not, not a gluer, not a gluey, that's for sure. So, is that straight? That looks pretty, since you can't see, does that look pretty straight? That looks pretty straight. And that's what you're going to do with all the rest of these. You are going to dry fit it in there. Make sure it is straight. And then you will add your glue, just like we did. So you don't have to see me struggle with these last three pockets. I'm going to come back after I get them all in. Okay, so I have all my pockets in now. So I just want to show you how these cards, these doors are going to fit in. So start off with 10, 9, oops, get those 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, and these are a little bit different. I'll show you those. Four, three, two, one. If I, if I would put these in straight, I'd put them all in crooked, but you can put them in straight. I'm just to demonstrate what we're doing here. So we have our cards in. And get them a little straighter. So when you are doing these cards, you can, you can do them any way you want. You can start off with something simple. Card num door number one, you can just simply glue the back of these cut aparts to the back. Simple, number one. You can make a little booklet. These little booklets. Number two, with another picture inside here. If you're making this for a grandchild, like my little granddaughter loves Minnie Mouse, you can put the nice little picture here with whatever they're into. Minnie Mouse, um, dinosaurs, whatever your grandchild may be into, they'd have fun looking at these little pictures. Or you can also do something like this. You can have door number three with a photo of your loved ones and then maybe a little 
you can write a little journaling here on something about the picture or the day, anything you want. Now, did I do no something with number four? And number four is just a simple one. If you don't have a little grandchild to give this to and you just want to keep it generic, something like this. They can add their own photos if they want here, or you can do a little journaling, or they can do a little journaling. Today we went to see Aunt Martha, whatever. They're all in here. So what? it's up to you. You can do, you can do multiple little um, full, uh, booklets, or you can mix and match them any way you want. The, the options are endless. So if you do want to make a booklet, you will cut a piece of cardstock two and three quarter inches long by three and a quarter inches wide, and then you will put it in your scoreboard and just score it at one and a half plus an eighth, so one and five eighths right down here. Fold it. Burnish it and go ahead and just round out your your edges here. And now you have your little booklet to do with whatever you want to with your doors. So I just think this is so cute. I'm going to, I still have to decorate all the pages, um, all the, the pockets, but I just wanted to show you kind of how it's, it's going to look. So I'll be back once I have all the pages decorated and you kind of figure out what you want to do. Or you can just leave them totally blank and put a, a journaling little flap on the back, whatever you want to do. So I'll be back. So I cut my, so I cut my pages my page. So I cut my pocket um, decorations here that the, the cardstock we're going to use. All of these measure, let's see, they are three and seven eighths inches long and they're all one and a half inches deep. So this first one is easy to put here. So when you're putting these other ones, <laughs> I always have to use a little piece of cardstock so I can kind of get my other pieces aligned so they're in straight. And they should just slide into your pocket. So if you cut them right, they should just slide in. There's no problem. Make sure, I hope we, I was in frame. Make sure you Ink all your edges before you put them in. So we're going to put this one in here. The dot. Let's get that in there. And then the next one I used was the green. As I get these all mixed up. You get the idea. Green. And then the gold. And then the dot again. And then the last one will be the red. So they'll be all in like that. Well, before I, I glued, I haven't glued these down yet, I thought I should probably put the doors in to see how they look. You can't really see the, the green. The green's kind of dark up there. But, but I rearranged the order because I had the red behind a red door, and you couldn't see the red door. And then I had a green behind the green door, and you couldn't see the doors. So I changed them up so the doors will will be pop out so they're not just kind of fading into the background. So this is the order I'm going to have for one through, oops, 10. And I haven't glued them down yet. I still have to uh, make sure they're the right size and ink the edges and then 
put them down in their little pockets and then I think we'll be done. So I'm going to go ahead and put them down in this order. Okay, let me clear up my mess here. So, so my pockets are all in. I put the, the doors back in. Now, this bottom pocket needs to be decorated. So you have so many options. You have so many pieces to cut from. You can try multiple things. I was thinking of a chipboard element down here, but since this is going to be on the inside, I didn't want to add any more bulk. Probably wouldn't matter because there's, there's bulk from just up in here. But I think I like just something simple like that with your doors saying happy holidays. So I think I'm done with this page. I think it's pretty cute. So many options, so many options. Anyway, so we're going to continue on now to the, we're going to apply this to our base page and then decorate this base. So we have our page three open to the sides here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Remember hinge goes down here. We are now ready to attach our pocket page where we had our little doors. I took out the doors so we can attach this. I applied my score tape. I am going to miter my corners here just because I like this mitered so my designer paper uh, <laughs> You do, you do it the way you do it. I just don't like designer paper um, butted against this edge, so I miter my corners. Probably doesn't make any difference. I gotta put this up to my eyes so I can see. And over here, miter this one. There. So I got my two edges mitered. I always write top so I don't get anything put in upside down. So what I'm going to do, probably off camera, because I can't see my black against black this far away. So what you're going to do is attach this little flap. You're go it's gonna be flush with the edge here, and you're going to make sure that this and this have the same reveal top to bottom. So I am going to do that. That looks pretty straight right there, but I'm going to be getting my head down there and looking at those edges real close. And then I will attach it and I will be right back. So I got my page in. Let's burnish that down. Burnish this edge again. Old line. So that's in. So what we're going to do here is we are going to create a pocket over on this end. So what you're going to do is cut a piece of cardstock three and a quarter inches wide by nine inches long, and you're going to score a half an inch on three sides. Go ahead and fold those score lines. Just do this one more time here. Okay, so I'm just gonna dry fit it just to make sure it fits in here okay. 
before I do any mitering and that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is miter these corners here. Here's my scissors. So you all know how to miter. You just cut from here through that X mark where the score lines are. So you just cut straight through there. And same thing on this side. And then I like to miter these little flaps at the top of the pocket so things slide in easier. Get right at that score line, cut down, go to the score line, and just cut right there. So that's good. See how those came out? Those are okay. So what I'm going to do I'm going to be applying my score tape. I wanted to mention something. Um, when I put this pocket in, maybe I will show you. I, If you watch my other tutorial, you know when I do my pockets, once I, I apply this side first and then I put scotch tape on here. So when I get this in, I'm going to show you what I do with that scotch tape. Some of you may al already do that with your pockets, but I will show you once I get this bottom flap in. So just attach the bottom flap, not the side flaps, just the bottom flap, and then I'll be right back. So we got the page in, this pocket in. So you have this little lip there from um, where you scored it. Now, if you have this, if you don't do anything and you just fold that over, you're always going to be, you're going to put something in there. It catches the lip of that. I mean, you can work it over it, but that's going to catch. So if you put a piece of scotch tape from end to end here, Do I need it from here to about there? Looks about right. From here. To here. Oh, I got it. Let me get my wrinkle out. Why am I getting wrinkles in my scotch tape? I don't want wrinkles. tape in. Hopefully I didn't get too close to the edge over there. Let's see. No, that's okay. So now your thing your will just slide right in. It just slides right over that scotch tape. So that's what I do with all my pockets. So I won't show you that again, but that's what I do with all the pockets. And now you just pull these and adhere it down and we're good to go. I've lost, let's see, what have I lost this week? I've lost my good my good pick tool. have no idea where it went, so I'm using this, which works okay. I've lost my best bone folder that I really like. I don't have any idea where it went. I've been looking for it, can't find it. Uh, I just lose things. And I try to keep everything organized. Oh. Do you guys do that too? Do you just lose things? And I, I kind of clean up in between. And I've looked in my trash. I looked on my floor. I just can't find it. Anyway. Crafting dilemmas. So next we're going to cover this pocket page. So you're going to... Hi there, I wanted to do an update on page three. So page three, <clears throat> we have made the pocket. Do not put any designer paper on top of the pocket. 
you will be transferring your magnets from this flap here over to the pocket. Just leave it uncovered. Do not put any designer paper over it. Originally, I had put green. You'll see that in the video. Do not put the green on there. Once you have this page inserted into the album, what you're going to do is add this strip of red, solid red, that's a continuation of this red. So you want it in your pocket so you get that, that line straight. You're going to be putting a quarter of an inch border or so right here on the pocket. It, this is just the gold solid, and I put some Winka Stella over it to give it some shimmer. Then you cut your red piece, same size as this, and then you add your dotted paper. Now, this dotted paper is coming from the 12 by 12 collection. The dotted paper is underneath this image of the 12 by 12 collection. You only have two sheets of this if you only ordered one pack, which is enough to do the album, but if you screw up, you, you, I just want to make sure you save these two these two pieces uh, from the 8x8 eight eight because you will need both of them to make the cover. So only use the 12x12 12 12 to get your dots because you're going to be having lots of these dots throughout the album. On the strip borders, cut this from the 12 by 12. There's another paper you only have two of. It's this one, the Welcome Home. You're gonna be using it here. So that's one whole eight by eight sheet. And you're going to be using it here. It's the same image, only we covered up the Welcome. So put this, these two eight by eights aside also, so you don't cut into them. Make sure you reserve the two sheets of this image also, because you have one eight by eight here, and you have one eight by eight image here. So do not cut into these two sheets. You'll need it for here and when we do the waterfall. Originally, I got two packs from Julie to make this, and that was more than enough. But once I went through the whole album, I, I thought, you only need one pack. If you do it right, you put aside the papers, and you don't screw up. <laughs> you can get through just using one pack. So hopefully you put this sheet aside, two of these, two of these and what was the other one was it, there was two of them and you do not cut into the dots um, of the 8x8 so hopefully which and the dots are on the back of this image so put oh yeah save save these two you will need two of these for the cover so hopefully that makes sense. Again, do not put any designer paper on this pocket on page three. Just have your magnets in place and you'll cover it after your page is in your album. Bye. So next, what we're going to do, we are going to use this paper, a Christmas Carol from the 8x8 collection. What we're going to do, we are going to center this. I'm going to be measuring it and centering it so I can have this centered. So when you open up this little booklet, we're going to have the Christmas Carol centered in here. The way we're going to be closing this, we are going to be using this as a magnetic closure. I'm going to get this centered from here to here. So that's where I'm going to put this paper 
in between this line and this line. So I'm going to do some measurements and get it centered and then I'm going to cut it and I will be right back. So what I did is I cut off about one and three eighths of an inch just from this side and then maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so down here. Just enough so I can slide this paper in the pocket. I centered, I found my center on this page and then I found the, the center when it, of, when it was an eight by eight on this page so Christmas Carol's kind of centered and then you just slip this in the pocket after you ink the edges which I still have to do and then you kind of have to get that in there then it's just a matter of lining up your center marks right there and getting it flush over on this side. I want it a little bit more over on this side, about like that. So that's where I'm going to put mine, just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and ink the edges. I'll probably just put glue. I'm going to make little tick marks. Glue. I mean, I'll probably just put my score tape. I'm going to put a little tick mark here. Let's see. That's right where I want to put it. A little tick mark here and a little tick mark here. And that will tell me on the back side I'm going to stop my score tape there because I'm going to be sliding the rest of this page underneath here. And I don't need score tape under there. So I will just stop my score tape where I put the tick mark. So that's what I'm going to do. Ink the edges, put my score tape just to where my tick marks are, and then slide it in, pull my score tape, and we'll be done with this inside part. So we have a Christmas Carol in. I still need to erase my, my marks that I made um, to center it. So let me erase those. Okay, so we got that in. I think that looks so pretty. Now we're going on this flip side, you're going to turn this over, mark this as top, just so you don't glue anything upside down. Because have I done that? Um, yeah. So you are going to get the 12 by 12 paper like this. Now we have been cutting some strips from this one. One of them we have not touched. I should have told you and hopefully I will put a little comment in the section where we start cutting these strips. Cut from the bottom. Cut from the bottom of this 12 by 12. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to use this top area of this 12 by 12 sheet to cover back in here when we measure it out, I will be making my little tick mark here and my little tick mark right here. And you're, do, you're coming in from the, the edge, the top edge here. You're going to just get that aligned, get your little tick marks, and when you cut, your line should be cut right above the ears. Right above the ears. I mean, even if you have a little bit of ear showing, no one's going to know what it is. But if you, if everything comes out great, the ear will be cut. So you're going to have just this little scene of the snow in the mountains. So I'm going to go ahead and... Um, cut and then I will tell you exactly how how many inches I cut in and then cut down. So I will be right back once I get this all cut. 
So I have my snow scene trimmed out. So this, from this corner to this corner, it measures four and seven eighths around there. Something like that. I mean, you always measure yours. There's, yours may be a little bit different. And from top, from the top to the bottom, it's seven and seven eighths. Measure yours because you made this, remember we made this just shy, almost eight. So just kind of measure yours. I have no deer ears down here. Those were cut off. I have like 16th of an inch left. Um, so the, the ears are cleared. So no problem. So see how that looks. Pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and ink the edges and make sure I look, I'm, it folds okay. It looks like it will. And I'll put that down. Make sure you put it down. So the top is top. It's going to be like this. And then what we're going to be doing is attaching our little snowman in our snow scene. So he is going to be double matted. I have to figure out what color I want back here. Um, he's going to be holding some magnets here that are going to go under here where I forgot my magnets. So he's going to be holding this whole thing shut. So isn't that darling? Our snowman in the snow. So I'm going to go ahead and ink the edges here and put this down and we'll be right back. So this snow scene page is down on our flap. So this is member going, it's on the opposite side of our little pocket. So this is going to go here. Isn't that lovely? And then we're going to get Mr. Snowman. So go ahead and um, trim him, ink his edges. We're going to find something to put on half of him because what we're going to do is, let's see, how are we going to do this? We're going to be attaching the magnets here. So there'll be some magnets here corresponding to the magnets under here. So we're going to have to hide the magnets on this side. So we're going to be covering it with some um, colored cardstock. And hopefully I won't put the colored cardstock on before I put the magnets on. So I was thinking that gold would be good to um, cover the inside of this. First we got to mount this on black cardstock. That's the first thing. I haven't even done that. Um, so let's go ahead and mount this on black cardstock. You just have a sixteenth of an H inch border around it. And let's get that mounted on him. And I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have Mr. Snowman matted on the black cardstock. I actually used 85 pound cardstock just to give it a little bit more oomph. <laughs> I could have used my 110, I guess, but I think 80 is going to be okay. So, where is he? He is about from an inch and a quarter from the bottom, an inch and a quarter from the bottom. And from the side, he, he is like an inch, an inch and one eighth. So like that. And I think this should be about what this is about, an inch and a quarter also. So they're about, they're about the same. Inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter, an inch and an eighth in. So he's going to be here. I kind of I put some um, removable tape 
can you see? <laughs> oh my gosh. Gotta look at the monitor. I put some removable tape there to hold them in place. And then you open them up and then this is what you see inside. So I was thinking I want to do the gold. I had my strip of gold. Probably this one's not going to work. I need a bigger one, a wider one. I think I like the solid gold just because it picks up. There's some gold letter. You probably can't see it, but if you have your paper, you can tell. There's some gold in this, the lettering in here. So I was going to just put some gold over here. Red would probably work also, and I might even try a strip of red just to see. It, but it doesn't really matter. Then the next thing that we need to do is I'm also going to be attaching a little ribbon. A little ribbon here so whoever gets this album will know this is a little flap that you're going to open up. So our choices for ribbon, this is just from my Christmas ribbon stash. We have our first one is the little round, I mean they almost look like little round snowflakes that go with this. So that is option number one. I really like him. Option number two is just a plain solid silver. Let's see what he might look like under there. Plain solid. Oops, don't want to take you off. Now I'm going to have to redo these. Option number two is plain silver. Not bad. He doesn't. That doesn't look bad either. You probably couldn't go wrong with anything. You could probably do gold to pick up some gold in here. I just, I do not have gold. You can probably do red too. <laughs> um, so I think I'm going to go with my little dots. I think that just kind of looks like it picks up the snow. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to cut out a piece of paper and I'm going to find my magnets and then we'll be right back. Okay, so next thing, I got this, I, I picked this, this gold and when you, you only need to measure it top to bottom and then you can cut it a little bit wider because what you're going to do is you're going to slip it under here anyway. But what we need to do now, and don't forget the magnets, Carla, <laughs> don't forget the magnets. We need to, before we do that, I'm going to make a line here because we need to either glue this part on to this glue, <laughs> hopefully I was in frame, glue this part in onto this page. Um, I'm probably going to be putting my score tape. You know me. If you want to use glue to put this down, this is just when you when you're doing that, you know that is where you you just have to put your glue or tape in, in here. You don't have to go on this side. And then I'll remeasure my my borders again but I think I know where it is so I'm going to go ahead and put my score tape on here get this guy um, affixed to this page and then we'll be back okay so I cut my tape and uh, I cut my tape I cut my ribbon and I like to glue the ends together just to give it more security it doesn't fray and this, I use this glue because this is really good glue. Sometimes I use this instead of my Tom, my Aqua Tombow, 
when I'm using it over my score tape to keep it from sticking right away. I really like this too, but it does have a little acetone odor, but it's really good for fabric. So I've clipped it. I'm going to let this dry and it may take like a half an hour or so to dry. So I'm just going to put it aside. Now, I still don't have small magnets. Um, I only have my large, large ones, the, these. These are the ones I have, my large magnets. We do sell these at, at our store. But I'm thinking, you know, sometimes large is good, especially if you're going to be putting this flap over a pocket and if you have lots of stuff in this pocket and you got those little the little magnets sometimes this just pops right off or doesn't hold that well so I'm thinking you know go big so I am going to place them usually I put them a half an inch up and a half an inch in I'm putting the positive side down never get these off down. so um, positive side down here I put it right there same thing on this one right there and I already have my negative stuck to it so I'm just going to remove tape if I can okay lift up my flap that I had to undo stick those down Let's see if they transfer They transferred so now we have my our magnets in so this one I can let's see yeah they're in <laughs> yay I'm going to wait for my ribbon to dry so I can put it in here and then I will add my paper and it's ready to go make sure you ink it around the edges because the edges are rounded here and I think once I come back this should kind of all be put together so this is done got our pull tag this goes open so my bumps I don't like my bump from my ribbon that's the problem with using solid paper you see the bumps. I can still see a little bit of my bumps from the magnets. And I think that's going to bother me. So I was thinking of maybe putting this from the 8x8 collection. It's, that might work. I just don't want it to be too busy. But this whole page is not, oop, it's not busy. This is not busy. This is not busy. This is kind of busy with all our doors. I might look for something. Oh, that's not busy. Hmm, the backside for journaling. Oh, yes. Hmm, that might work. What do you think? Do you like that? Or do you like that? You have options, so many options. And then we'll make um, an insert here at the very end. And that is going to be it for page three.